So men after men, boy after boy, they go through this. There's no punishment. If they protected by the road, the judge, the DA, the people in the industry, because they work for them. They're their slaves. Now, when you look at all of this, you're saying, okay, we're doing it. Don't try to take Suge Knight lightly. He has all the proofs. Suge Knight has stoked the flames of a heated quarrel by accusing Snoop Dogg's wife, Shanti Broadus, of doing some crazy things with other men. You heard that right. Even Snoop Dogg isn't free from controversy. Even though Snoop makes it seem like his marriage is perfect now. The turmoil and the stuff that I put her through in, in my journey mm -hmm. on becoming successful because I had no understanding of what I was doing her, how I was hurting her, and how I was betraying myself until I became a man and realized that I need to love this woman who loves me and had my kids and put my life in perspective and let my music and my business be secondary. The reality isn't always what it seems. You know, you take a lot of women and a lot of black men feel that they got to have children outside their race because they was taught that black is not beautiful. But black been beautiful. Back in the day, they just complained about black women lips too big, they act too big. You know, they wear cornrows. So they try to get them to get breast reduction, take that off, or their lips not to be big. Now all of a sudden, people start getting the fake lips in the tank. And it's in here now. Where I'm going with this, Snoop, stop letting these people use you, man. You didn't want to be pushing death row when you was on death row. That's not neither here nor there. You get these people, they use you motherfuckers to go against a black mother. And we ain't on no racist because y'all racist against y'all own people. But at the same time, we're going to settle this once and for all. Show me, the, show not me, because I know the real. Show everybody the world. If a man that's another man take care of him. He shouldn't be offended or get upset when that, when that man treats him like a bitch. If you allow a man to take care of you, how could you get mad when he tell you shut your punk ass up and go get me a drink? Because you putting yourself in that position by allowing another man to feed you. I ain't allowing him to feed me. I let him know I, want, I handle my business to do what I need to do to feed myself. Here's everything you need to know. Now, this accusation has stoked the flames of a feud that has been created by none other than the convicted Shug Knight. In an effort to stir up a storm of controversy within the hip-hop community, Shug came forward and released a photo on Twitter that reportedly showed Shante celebrating her vacation in Hawaii with not Snoop, but an unidentified guy. And of course, Shug did not hold back in his passionate statements that accompanied the initial post. He addressed Snoop Dogg personally, saying, You pray for me, Snoop Dogg. Okay, I'll pray your wife stop going to Hawaii with other men. As expected, the post soon gained popularity, which prompted Shug's followers to call attention to the fact that the photo was already quite old. Having not been phased by the situation, Shug responded by posting a more recent picture of Shante with the same man, which further escalated the incident. At this point, he added a dig regarding unresolved financial concerns, referencing Snoop's ownership of Death Row Records as an example. What check that you purchased there from? 
Og oh, hernede. Still there. Snoop. Somebody. Anybody. I would say the other person. We know he didn't write no check. But anybody there? Snoop? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> But why would he target Dog like that? Well, according to individuals within the industry, the relationship between Shante and Snoop may not be as real as it appears. These sources speculate that the couple may merely keep up the impression of being married in order to protect Snoop's reputation in the public eye. Additionally, Shug's incendiary statements about various significant players in the music industry, such as Sean Combs, Dr. Dre, Russell Simmons, and Andre Harrell, who passed away, are the origin of the rivalry that exists between Snoop and Suge. You see, an accusation was made by Suge Knight on his podcast titled Collect Call with Suge Knight, that the individuals in question were engaging in relationships with people of the same gender while at the same time dating women. Andre Harrell and Russell Simmons, everybody know they might not want to say it, they know they was lovers. They participated in those types of things. And once again, Puffy started some journeys. Allegedly, they sent Puffy, they sent Usher to go do a lot of songs with Puffy. I don't think they got any songs down on that run. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes. You know what I'm saying? Before pause was invented, but we used to actually wrestle off of the, all for the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early with me. <laughs> now he's one of the richest stars yo, in the world. And I'm yo, like, what, what the, the f did Puff just say? The usher words was he would wake up after drinking and being drunk in the bed with Puff. Of course, for now, Snoop Dogg has chosen to take a more diplomatic stance in reaction to Shug's insults. And he did so by stating that he intends to continue praying for Shug, not addressing the rumors about his marriage. According to Snoop, I'm praying for that brother that he finds peace. This wasn't the first time Snoop tried to bury the hatchet with Suge to keep his mouth shut. But I, I had to go get that cool with him. I had to go sit down with Suge when we wasn't cool. Right. I seen him in uh, Vegas. I was, uh, you know, moving around, doing my thing, thing. And um, while I was getting the hotel room, she said, hi, Suge. I'm like, <laughs> turn around. <laughs> And my security, he big old like 6'9, 340. He immediately on him. Boom. Shug like, doggy dog. Man, tell this nigga, I ain't tripping, man. Tell this nigga to kick back. Cause it's like my dog is on him now. Yeah. You know, you got your <laughs> Like, calm down. Sit. 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 <laughs> Sit. I said, all right, check it out. You know where I'm at. He said, hey, let me come holler at you. I said, let me finish with this real quick. What was the temperature at that point between the relationship? Hot, right, man. okay. Yeah, yeah. Hot. Like, I had that one right. They seen him before I did. Right. I had to tell them. <laughs> <"Come out." laughs> let me holler. Right. So this is what I do. I say, when I finish with this little woo wop I'm with, I'm going to have my folks come down here and tell you what room I'm in. And then when you come up to my room, there ain't going to be nobody in there. Just me and you. About 45 minutes, I said, my name down. Go get cuz and tell him to come up. I said, matter of fact, don't even come up with him. I want him to feel comfortable. Just tell him where we're. Matter of fact, give him the room key. Uh. Come on in. Nobody in there, just me and my n****. 
Superfly. Superfly sitting right next to me. But Superfly ain't no threat. He just producer that's just want to hear exactly what's happening. So we chopping it up. And the whole conversation is, I love you, now. I could have saved you. I had nothing but love for you. And his conversation was, nigga, I love you. I ain't got nothing but love for you. Why did you try to get me pop pop when you love me? You know what? I forgive you. I ain't gonna do nothing to you. This nigga outside that wants your head right now. I ain't gonna do nothing to you. You can go and walk up out here and we're gonna be cool from this day forward. Now, this isn't the only thing Suge is under the spotlight for. He is known for revealing details he probably shouldn't. Relatively recently, Suge Knight, who was born and raised in Compton and is one of the co-founders of Death Row Records, made a dramatic change in his position about the inquiry into the terrible shooting that occurred in 1996 involving Tupac Shakur. Lane starts blasting. Um, you say Suge looks over, he sees you. He looks right at you? Yeah, he looks at me. When he looks over at you, and then, you know, Tupac's busy getting shot. Uh, evidently, the story is Tupac's trying to either get out yeah, of the line. In the back seat or something. Yeah, what do you see happening inside of their car? Out. I seen a bullet going shoot again. Yeah, I thought he was dead. I thought he was dead. So Orlando shot him this car across Dre? He leaned over on the window. He rolled down the window and popped. Who was it? They would throw on my side. I would pop them. You know what I'm saying? But they was on the other side. Right. Knight, who is presently serving a sentence of 28 years for voluntary manslaughter, stunned many people by dropping his defense of Keith D, a former gang member who is accused of participating in the murder of Tupac Shakur in a recent edition of his podcast titled Collect Call with Shug Knight. You know, um, I know a lot of people feel like I was saying, like, uh, free Keith D. They didn't understand why I said that. I did for one wish prison on nobody. And I say that no matter who it is. Two, in KVD situation, we know each other, we got history. He ain't built that type of way for us. One of those rah-rah type of niggas. Not saying that's good or bad, but it's like this. Hey, Keith, Metro Police. If any of this shit is true, and I ain't here to say what it is and what's not, he more safer in prison than he is on the street. You know, in prison, it's a lot of protection. You know, you can only do so much. You know, you got guards and everything else, I'm quite sure. You know, we get the utmost uh, best treatment around. On the streets, any given day, anything can happen. God is forgiven, but the streets are not. So a lot of people are more safer in prison than they are on the streets. So that's doing any more justice in, in prison than the streets. In a shift from his past statements, Knight now asserts that justice is being done for one of the most prominent individuals in the history of hip-hop. Rather than merely punishing or imprisoning those who attempted to discredit or damage the iconic musician, he underlined that justice for Tupac entails holding accountable those individuals who carried out such actions. Knight expressed his view that jealousy was a significant factor in the chain of circumstances that led to the untimely death of Tupac Shakur, reflecting on his close friendship with Tupac, but also taking a shot at Snoop. I said this from day one, when we first started talking about it. See, jealousy is worse than hate. When your name start ringing, people get jealous of you. You know, if a person hates you, you can be across the street and they can see you they can see, you know, I hate that mother. I hate him or I hate her. Him, right? Hmm. And that's that. A jealous person destroyed. Because a jealous person, you don't need mind every time they're awake. Hmm. Every time they're thinking you in their head. So they want to destroy you. They want to get rid of you. You know, I really, really, really 
got to have a We always go to the fight together. We always go to the club together. Even when they did that half ass watered down movie on pot, and he said, You're going to be at the fight? And all that type of shit. <laughs> so then all of a sudden, Warren says on the stage where they listen to the radio and they hear the gunshots. And basically, somebody told them, We got them, or they got shot, or all this shit. So how would you know that? Why would you have a play-by-play on the radio? I kicked everybody out. Get the fuck out of here, everybody. Get out of here, man. And he took off. That's when he went to Vegas mm-hmm. to go see him. And that's when he went out there and when he went to the hospital. But I, had, if I wouldn't have talked to him and, and, and got him to come over to my house, he probably would have been right there in the car with them. He said Snoop kicked him out and he came to the hospital. Snoop never came to the hospital. Period. In his earlier words to TMZ, Knight indicated his unwillingness to see Keith D suffer legal ramifications. Surprise number one, because I didn't think um, <laughs> Keith D had never get arrested. Nor do I want to see him get arrested. You know, let's get one thing uh, straight first and foremost. You know, <laughs> me and Keith D playing on the same Pop Warner football team. And whatever the circumstances, if he had an involvement with anything, if he didn't have any involvement with anything, I still, who want to see? I wouldn't wish somebody to go to prison on my worst enemy. Not to forget, Knight disputed recent findings from an investigation that suggested Orlando Anderson, nephew of Keith D, was the person responsible for the shooting death of Tupac Shakur. Knight now claims that Anderson was not responsible for the fatal drive-by shooting even though he had previously stated that he was. There was only two people in the car. And Pac not going to tell the story. I ain't going to tell the story, but I tell you this. And I, I never had nothing bad to say about uh, uh, Orlando because <laughs> number one, he wasn't a shooter. Number two, he came to my hearing and told <laughs> to let me go and tell the truth. As a whole, the recent comments that Suge Knight made about Shanti Broadus, who is married to Snoop Dogg, have caused fans to be skeptical, mainly because Suge Knight has a history of making statements that contradict one another, and his motivations are unclear. Just a short while ago, Knight voiced his surprise at the arrest of Dwayne, Keith D. Davis, in connection with the murder of Tupac Shakur. He also claimed that he would not testify against Davis, regardless of whether or not he was summoned to produce testimony. If you are called to testify in this case, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. Why not? Yeah, I wouldn't be. Why not? Well, number one, I can because I'm not going to get on the stand and testify on somebody for what? They seem to be saying that Orlando was the shooter and Keefe was in on it, that he had full knowledge of what was going down and it was revenge for Orlando getting beaten up by Tupac and his team uh, at the MGM after the Tyson fight. Is that correct? No. Then who shot Tupac? It wasn't Anderson, so that's all I got to say about that part. To summarize, you are saying Orlando was not the shooter, although you won't say who the shooter was. You are not saying whether Keefe was involved in any way in the shooting um, and you are saying that if you're called to testify by either side you will not comply you will not testify do i have that right thousand percent i wouldn't go i wouldn't testify as a result fans are now questioning the legitimacy of knight's accusations as it appears that knight is currently involved in a public spat with snoop dogg regarding allegations of infidelity And even though Knight is currently serving time in prison and his reputation is diminishing, many believe that his objectives could come from a desire to continue to be influential in the hip-hop community. A lot been said, a lot been done, even on my part. You know, squad, they get phone calls from people I help the most, more than most anybody in this world. They put phone calls up here, try to keep me crossed up, Say I shouldn't use a platform to talk, take my privileges. Nonsense. There's a person that 
of eating the rest of his life in prison. Because now that the market is changing and Knight is falling farther and further behind, Knight may be making an intentional effort to recapture attention and influence by stirring up controversy and drama. What do you think? That's all for today. Share your thoughts in the comments below. For more updates, hit the bell icon.